So I spent my childhood wasting time. While other kids were off learning to be bilingual by age six, I was playing around. While other kids were being taken to kindergarten writing camps, I was digging in the sand. When other kids were scoring goals like uh, I was supposed to, I was throwing a bag in the air. While other kids were in second grade asking for extra homework, I was playing war with the Legos in my room. And while other kids were being dragged by their parents to go write essays with the museums they saw, some actually did that. I was playing video games and drawing blocks on a screen. So why am I in front of you right now? What could Intel, Discovery, PC Pilot, or MIT's Computer Science, Artificial Intelligence Lab, want with some other achiever who spent his childhood wasting time? Well, put simply, I played. Albert Einstein said, play is the highest form of research. Now I'm not saying I'm Einstein or anything like that. But, I couldn't agree more. If you love what you're doing, and you treat it like play, or if you play and you learn from it, you can gain so much more. So let's start with that plastic bag. So this was back before a Rex soccer game. Back when I was, I don't even know how young. And I found this plastic bag, was throwing it up in the wind. And the first thing I thought, well this is fun, I'm just gonna chase a bag. A little bit of exercise. And then I found, hey, the bag is moving. And that's because it's air resistance. It's catching with the wind. So I realized, oh, the bag represents how the wind is moving. And then I noticed that the bag moved differently. Versus when it was up hot, it was close to the ground. So I realized, oh, the wind is acting differently. Based on, essentially, wind drag with the ground. So I learned even a little bit of a physics lesson from that. What a waste of time. So, back in elementary school, I spent a lot of time playing with paper, making little machines like this one. So there's three slots, each coating with three sodas. And okay, as you can see, they all. And so what you have to do, like you know, the and like there, for other room for other sodas, you can just put them down here, like you know, you can see there's a mug of beer and everything. Now. I'm not saying that that wasn't much of an innovation or anything impressive, really. But what I did learn from that is how to build things simply because paper is not the best material. It's not like carbon fiber or anything. So I had to learn to build things simply. I'm really thankful for my second grade teacher, Ms. Haas, for allowing us to spend our snack time playing and learning on our own. Speaking of Ms. Haas, this is something that I built for her, combining what I learned in school with what I learned in play. I learned about how plants work in school and how they need light. And I learned about gears with playing with Legos. So I was able to build a little rotating planter. But that wasn't my favorite thing to build with the Legos. Much to my parents' chagrin, I spent my childhood building rubber band guns. Now, this model right here, one of my later ones, has artificial blowback, is semi-automatic and can hold multiple rounds. I'm gonna give you guys a little demo. So, I think it's pretty cool. But it didn't start like that. It started back at age nine, the rubber band gun that was more like this. Now, this looks like a pretty serious waste of time, I mean. What even is it? But I kept going, and I eventually learned to make rubber band guns holding multiple rubber bands and making semi-automatic until I got to something like this. I was even able to get to something like this. A lot of fun, a lot of fun. Anyways, what I really learned from the rubber band guns are a few things. First of all, I learned how to think mechanically. You see, Legos, they're wonderful, a wonderful prototyping device. But they have limited shape, limited things you can really work with. So I had to learn to build this thing simply, because it still has to fit in my hand. I also learned the power of persistence. It took years to be able to make something like that. It didn't happen instantly, but it showed me if I kept trying, I can make something pretty cool. Now I took my uh, 
affinity, you could say, for weapons into the virtual world with a game called Blockland. Now, Blockland is a video game, one of those massive time wasters that nothing ever good comes out of. So, it's a sandbox game where you can kind of just build anything and do anything. But what made the game really great were the community of add on makers. People who made weapons and vehicles, blocks, game modes, and maps. For the game, now that people would play with online, and after about a year of wasting time playing the game, on my own volition, I decided I would become one of those add-on makers. So, I got Milkshape, which is a 3D modeling software. And I started just making a bunch of blocks on the screen, because that's really all I knew how to do. To say I was bad would be an understatement. It looked like a bunch of brown squares. but. I got better at 3D modeling, better at animating, better at scripting, even better at image editing. And by fourth grade, I released my first add-on to the Blockland community. Everyone hated it. The internet is full of trolls. Nothing new there. But I kept going. And by the time I hit middle school, I was releasing lots of these add-ons with working gun sights, reloading and much better animation. They were being used all across the community. I could log onto a server and see people playing with my toys. So what I learned from this was obviously the technical skills. I learned how to code. I learned how to 3D model. And I learned, essentially I continued to learn how important persistence was. It took years for me to get there. I was doing something that didn't seem terribly productive. And, and I learned that what I can make can have an impact on the world. Even today when I log on to Blockland, sometimes I'll find people using my add-on, even seven years later. But that's not the big reason I'm in front of you guys today. The big thing that I did was I made this virtual reality cockpit. Now, what that means, it's a physical cockpit to interface with the flight simulator program. So I can fly in my room and look around and feel like I'm actually outside in a plane. And what I see in virtual reality, I can go and touch and operate. The way this started actually though, in elementary school, my mom bought me Microsoft Flight Simulator 10. So I spent a lot of time in my childhood flying planes on a computer. It doesn't seem terribly productive, because I wasn't about to be a pilot anytime soon. You know, you'd think, oh, do homework or something better. Or go ask for homework or do something better. But, but I kept like wanting to do it. And um Actually, after the robotics season ended last year, actually about exactly a year ago, I was going through stuff making withdrawal. By the way, my robotics team is Team 245, it's outside. I was going through stuff making withdrawal. So I decided, hey, you know what? I'm just gonna make a cockpit. So I just started cutting things. Because my enthusiasm for airplanes had grown from my understanding of physics, because I learned to build things mechanically, with my rubber band guns, because I learned to model and code with Blockland, and through all these things I learned what a lot of hard work can do, I was able to get my first cockpit to completely fly in my room within two months. Now, that wasn't good enough. So I kept going and built what you see lower right there. It's a Cessna 172 simulator. This time it was natural somewhat of a replica. Here's what it can do. All right, and because again, 3D modeling skills I learned in Blockland, I was able to take that and apply it to CAD. So now working on my third cockpit, I already have hundreds of hours on this model. I learned that through time in Blockland, how much hard work can accomplish, and the 3D modeling skills I learned. What I want you guys to all take away, if you enjoy something, if you love playing, just go for it even if it seems like it isn't much. You might do a lot of things as a kid, and most of them might be a waste of time, but some of them will be, will be something. So, even if you're just chasing a bag in the wind, you might even learn a good physics lesson. Thank you.